Hi, I'm Dr. Sakeb, and this is my channel, Learning Anatomy. And uh, today I'm um, with another new topic, which is the anterior triangle of neck. Uh, you know, previously uh, we have done the posterior triangle, which we call the lateral cervical region, and uh, it was also subdivided into various parts. And uh, the main muscles, which is responsible, main muscle which is responsible for uh, making these triangles are trapezius and sternocleidomastoid. And uh, then as we come to the interior triangle of neck, the interior cervical region also called. And uh, in that uh, you see, uh, this is the interior cervical region. Here comes the anterior median line. And again, the posteriorly lying is the sternocleidomastoid. Again, to recapitulate, and you can go back to my lecture of um, posterior triangle and to learn its subdivisions. And uh, for the uh, repeat, this is C, uh, sternocleidomastoid, and this is C, uh, trapezius, and you see, and uh, this is the uh, again uh, anterior median line. And uh, this is you, you, uh, we can now make formally um, the concept why these uh, triangles are. Uh, made uh, in anatomy it's not to make the things complemented it is just to uh, make clear the precise location of the structures arteries vessels nerves uh, uh, where they are present uh, accurate to locate the accurate position of these structures in the neck anteriorly and posteriorly and uh, this will uh, tell us about various pathologies and the diseases uh, and uh, Will uh, you know, I mean, uh, be for a better descriptive purpose, and uh, just to tell us more uh, elaborately, and to tell others uh, that what is the problem, what is the disease, and also then to uh, treat it accordingly, with any surgery or whatever it is. So this is why these triangles are made. This is the clinical significance. So uh, the boundaries of the anterior triangle of the neck or the anterior cervical region. So this is very simple. So we start, this is anteriorly, this is the anterior median line. This is anteriorly, this is the anterior median line, and posteriorly lies the, our this sternocleidomastoid, sternocleidomastoid, and uh, then above, this is a base formed by the lower part of the base of the, mandible this is mandible and this apex this is at the jugular notch right so this is the overall boundaries and uh, the, of course there's a roof and a floor roof is formed by uh, you know subcutaneous tissue which contains the platysma and the floor is constituted by the pharynx larynx and the thyroid gland so you see, uh, but uh, this uh, also, this um, I mean, triangle is divided uh, further, uh, subdivided into four triangles, four subdivisions by two muscles. This is the omohyoid, right? And this is the digestic, digestic muscles and the omohyoid divides this anterior cervical region or the anterior triangle of the neck into four further subdivisions which are over here this and uh, this is a submental uh, triangle not over here so uh, this is a submental triangle and uh, uh, this is single not paired this is in the median lines we will discuss each triangle separately and uh, then you see this is the diagastric or the submandibular triangle right and uh, of course you see the vn is subserved by this diagastric this is the posterior belly of the digestic we know the digestic has an anterior belly and a posterior belly attached to the hyoid bone this is the hyoid bone this is the mandible base so this is a submantle triangle this is a, our uh, digestric or the other name is a submandibular uh, triangle of course this is submandibular triangle contains a submandibular gland and the lymph nodes so uh, this is the very very important carotid triangle Right, so carotid void is important. Void is um, uh, called carotid because it is, it is the vascular uh, triangle because it contains a common carotid artery and its subtilians, internal and external carotid arteries. So it's very, very important. And then we uh, come below. This is uh, the 
our muscular triangles. So of course, this is a muscular uh, space and various muscles are uh, present like this, you know, make a concept. This is the high head bone and below that are the muscles present in the neck. We'll show you in the diagram later. Uh, of course, these are known as the infra high head muscles. So this is a, a containing these muscles, this homo hyoid. So this is the concept. And uh, this is the mention of the subdivisions. So remember digestic and homo hyoid. This is the homo hyoid and this is the digestic subdividing the uh, this anterior triangle of the neck into four portions. So uh, first of all is the submental triangle. Of course, this is placed inferior to the chin in the supra higher area. And uh, you can see, it's just a beautiful picture again. And uh, here you see, this is the, uh, our uh, submental triangle. Okay. This is the submental triangle, right? Submental triangle below the chin. Show you another, another uh, uh, like this is from the lateral view. I will show you from the front and interior view. So this is the uh, you know submental. This submental below the chin, mental is chin. So first of all, we are discussing the submental triangle. So what's the boundaries? Very simple. This is a dotted outline is the our submental triangle, right? And this is the base of the submental triangle formed by the hyoid bone base right and this is the apex and it is lying at the symphysis menti right and you can go back to my lecture on the mandible you know what is the symphysis menti how it is formed then uh, what is it is in the infant and how it is united later on so this is a symphysis menti median line of the mandible and laterally these are the two muscles which are those these are the digastric anterior belly this is the digestive anterior belly on both sides so this is single median lane one triangle in the body um, rest of the three are the uh, double both uh, sides they're present on each side of the neck so this is the our anterior belly of the uh, you know um, a digestive and this is and this also remember that recognizes median refe median refe where this uh, mylohyoid muscles are attached Milo hyoid muscle with the median raphe, they form the floor of the triangle, floor of the submental triangle, and uh, also the floor of the mouth. This word which is formed, somebody asked you how the floor of the mouth is formed. So there are uh, two muscles, Milo hyoid, and rest I will tell you in the picture later on. So Milo hyoid with the median raphe, so floor of the submental triangle, and uh, this is the thing. And, uh, uh, this you see these are the uh, mentioned these are the infrahyoid muscles just a, just a point we talk about later on and uh, so do you see this i have to show you uh, this was the mylohyoid i showed you here again you go back this is the mylohyoid and then interiorly in the forming the floor of the mountain floor of this um, our submental triangle and here you see this is the mylohyoid squarely yes show sure, here laterally and this is the mylohyoid along with this hyoglossus. Hyoglossus. This is the hyoglossus. Hyoglossus. This is the mylohyoid. They are forming the floor of the mouth. We'll uh, discuss uh, in a further uh, later lecture. So you identify its beautiful diagram. This is mylohyoid and this is the hyoglossus, right? You also identify a now here, the hypoglossal nerve. We'll talk about later very soon. This is hypoglossal nerve here. So the contents of the submental triangle, very simple again. This is uh, mainly this. Uh, this is your uh, lymph nodes, right? These are the submental lymph nodes, and a small vein that form the anterior jugular vein. So then the submandibular, the digestive triangle, should already. And uh, she can talk about here. This is, you know, this is uh, at uh, this is A over here, and in the picture, see at the picture, this is the diagastric and the submandibular triangle. So it is not uh, difficult to see above. This is the uh, um, base of the mandible, lower part, lower part of the mandible, and uh, then the these um, our uh, 
digastric muscles. This is the anterior belly, and this is the posterior belly. And you read from here. So, inferior border of the mandible above, and the anterior and posterior bellies of the digastric muscle. Right. So, you see, this is the uh, mandible inferior border. This is the posterior belly of the digastric. This is higher. This is the pulley of the digastric. We'll talk later. And uh, this is the anterior belly of the digastric. They enclose a space which is the submandibular triangle or the digastric triangle. So the floor, I told you, mylohyoid and hyoglossus. Mylohyoid and hyoglossus. You again see mylohyoid and hyoglossus. The floor of the submandibular um, triangle also formed by this, right? And uh, they form the floor of the mouth together. Hyoglossus and mylohyoid. So the contents of the digestic triangle, the submandibular triangle. Of course, this is submandibular triangle. Uh, it contains a superficial portion of the submandibular gland, anterior, right? And the facial vein and the submandibular lymph nodes are superficial to it and facial artery deep to it. Then the submental artery and the mylohyoid nerve and vessels and the structures superficial to hyoglossus are submandibular gland, intermediate tendon of the digastric and stylohyoid and the hypoglossal nerve. And uh, these are the structure anteriorly. You identify uh, some of them in uh, this picture, right? Uh, so this is, you know, this was a, like, this is very important. This I told you, hypoglossal nerve. This I wanted to show you. This is the hypoglossal nerve. And uh, and to also identify the gland and the, which is the over the submandibular gland. This is the submandibular gland in the submandibular region. So this is submandibular gland, and this is very important over this hypoglossal nerve. So the, the two sets of uh, structures uh, which are superficial to mylohyoid first, and then the structure superficial to hyoglossus. So this, you know, this is the a mylohyoid and this is the hyoglossus. So this is, you can make a concept and you identify the structures uh, from uh, these diagrams. And uh, here you also identify, so you see, this is the submandibular gland in the submandibular triangle, submandibular gland, and then the submandibular lymph nodes, right? And this is the, our uh, facial vein, also the facial artery you can identify, right? And these are the various portions uh, of these uh, uh, structures present in the um, uh, this, uh, digastric triangle, right? And uh, this is the um, structure. Then what is present posteriorly in the digastric triangle? Superficially are present in the lower part of the parotid gland and the external carotid artery before and to the parotid gland and deeply traced structures of the styloglossus, stylopharyngeus, glossopharyngeal nerve, pharyngeal branch of the vagus nerve, part of the parotid gland, styloid process, and also the deepest structures of the internal carotid artery, vagus nerve, and internal jugular vein. Of course, you know these structures are present in which part? You can go back to the lecture, my lecture on the deep cervical fascia. One fascia was the carotid sheath. So these are all enveloped by these three, by the carotid sheath. They're present throughout the length of the neck. This is the neurovasculature of the neck, internal jugular vein, vagus nerve, and the internal carotid artery. This is the thing, right? You can see common carotid artery also, and then which divides into external and internal carotid artery. And here are specifically internal carotid artery. So this is the um, uh, various structures lying on the that part. And you see this is uh, our, this is a parotid gland, which is showing you here. You also identify here spinal accessory nerve, right? Uh, this is a thing, spinal accessory nerve. So that is the point. And uh, here you also see this is parotid gland in this diagram. This is the, right? This is the parotid gland. So this is again the I showed you already hypoglossal nerve, hypoglossal nerve. And moving to this picture, um, uh, various things are present, right? This again, you see, this is the mylohyoid, right? And um, then I also show you this facial artery and its branch, submental artery, right? And uh, these two structures and the nerve to mylohyoid, right? This is the submandibular region.
This is the submandibular gland. You see, this is the labeling. This is the submandibular gland. This is the various structures presented over here clearly, right? So uh, the next triangle, which is vascular triangles, is carotid triangle. It's the presence of the carotid vessels. And uh, its boundaries, um, uh, you see in this diagram, this is, you know, so this is the B, this, yes, this blue. And uh, this is the carotid triangle. You see posteriorly is the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid, sternocleidomastoid. And uh, then uh, anteriorly is, uh, I tell you, so this is uh, anteriorly lying is uh, our uh, this uh, omohyoid superior belly, and uh, superiorly and uh, this is the uh, this uh, the posterior belly of the digastric muscle. These are the boundaries. You repeat. Uh, so posteriorly is anterior part of the sternocleidomastoid, and then the this omohyoid superior belly and the posterior belly of the digastric. So this is the boundaries of the our uh, carotid triangle, I told you, um, uh, the division of the common carotid artery occurs at the level of the thyroid cartilage, right? Which divides into external and the internal carotid arteries. So contents of the carotid triangle. Important, I told you already, the western triangle contains lots of, uh, you know, neurovasculature. This is arteries of the common carotid artery. And very important, such as carotid body and carotid sinus. I will discuss uh, even here, not separately today. It's very important, uh, small topics. Internal carotid artery and external carotid artery. Which is the branches of the external carotid, some of them, many of them. This is the facial, lingual, superior thyroid, ascending pharyngeal, and occipital branches are uh, seen in this carotid triangle. And the veins, internal jugular vein, common facial vein, and the lingual vein. And the nerves, the hypoglossal, vagus, spinal accessory, and the superior laryngeal branch, vagus, external and internal laryngeal branches. And we have to resort to this picture, very, very, uh, you know, um, uh, vital and uh, important. You see, uh, we enlarge and zoom this uh, rather, and uh, you see. Uh, this is uh, the um, you know this is the area which is uh, our uh, this carotid triangle if you see and identify this uh, from here the internal carotid artery and the external carotid artery right so uh, this is the internal carotid artery and this is the uh, you know external carotid artery right okay. this is the external carotid artery this is the internal carotid artery stemming from the uh, this common carotid artery, which divides the upper part of the thyroid cartilage. You identify these structures, of course. These are the arteries and the branches of the our uh, this external carotid artery, which you can see various branches, right? And uh, I told mentioned and uh, written over here already, uh, so you can identify some of them in uh, that. And uh, then you see this hypoglossal nerve, the 12th cranial nerve. This is the hypoglossal nerve here. This is the spinal accessory nerve, right? Spinal accessory nerve and 11th cranial nerve. And the, then over this uh, uh, 12th cranial nerve, which is the hypoglossal nerve, right? And uh, then we come to this the branches of the vagus nerve, which are the you see external laryngeal nerve and the internal laryngeal nerve, which is the first, superior laryngeal nerve, internal and um, external laryngeal nerve. External laryngeal nerve and internal laryngeal nerve. So you see, there is the uh, structures. Of course, I showed you already, this is the internal jugular vein. And these are the various structures uh, which we have to identify over here in the, uh, where, uh, Carotid triangle. Of course, you see uh, that uh, the sternocleidomastoid is, uh, uh, you know, cut uh, from here. I show you with the pointer, the laser. Yes, here you see this is the our uh, sternocleidomastoid. It works over here, but to show the structures in the carotid triangle, the vascular triangle. This is the vessels, 
written over here and I'll fold it. And then it's branch of the external carotid dotry, right? And then the our soft internal carotid dotry, common carotid dotry, internal jugular vein, and the, uh, the four cranial nerves present over here in this area, which are the vagus nerve, hypoglossal nerve, spinal accessory nerve, uh, right? And this is a written to you, and this is a, a superior laryngeal branch, vagus with its external and internal laryngeal branches. And the cranial nerve itself are the three spinal accessory, vagus, and hypoglossal nerve, right? So, what is carotid sinus and carotid body? You see, these are the structures. This is the carotid sinus and this is the carotid body. You see, like this is the carotid body lying at the junction in a septum where the common carotid artery divides into the um, in, uh, internal carotid and external carotid uh, branches. And uh, carotid sinus is a dilatation. It's a dilatation at the start of the uh, this internal carotid artery. This is the carotid sinus, the dilatation. So this dilatation may involve this in common carotid artery as well. And uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, uh, supplied by the, mainly by the glossopharyngeal nerve, right? And it's uh, its branches, the carotid sinus nerve, but it's also supplied by the uh, vagus nerve. Some part of the spine for the vagus nerve. So this is the sinus, uh, you know, and uh, this is a baroreceptor, that is the pressoreceptor. This responds when the arterial blood pressure is altered. So it maintains this blood pressure. This is the pressure receptor or the baroreceptor, carotid sinus. So carotid sinus is a baroreceptor. So what about this uh, carotid body? So it's a rounded body and uh, this uh, tiny reddish brown rounded tissue lies in a septum on the medial side of the common carotid artery, but it divides. Can you see this is the, and uh, this is the junction, so which is the septum where the, this common carotid artery divides into internal carotid and the external carotid branches, and you see it lies at this junction in this septum medial side. And uh, this carotid body is about also supplied by the carotid sinus nerve branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve and to some extent by the vagus nerve. So it is a chemoreceptor. So carotid body is a chemoreceptor, controls oxygen level in the blood. It reacts when oxygen level drops and starts the reflex. So the rate and depth of the respiration, blood pressure, and also the cardiac rates are enhanced. So this is the role of the carotid body. It responds to the chemical changes, changes in the oxygen level. So I told you already that uh, the neurovasculature in the carotid triangle lies in the carotid sheath. You can go back, I told you already, in my lecture on the deep cervical fascia, fascia poli. So, this is the, you know, present throughout these vessels in the carotid sheet. Then this is the muscular triangle. This is uh, the last triangle today, which is the fourth triangle, part of the anterior cervical region. And uh, you identify, this is the, you have to see, this is the muscular triangle and the anterior is anterior median plane. And this is the uh, upper, superiorly, this is the superior belly of the omohyoid. And posteriorly is the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid. So contents of the infrahyoid muscles and the viscera like the thyroid gland and the parathyroid gland. So this is very important. It's, when the, it's a muscular triangle, of course, contains muscles, which are the infrahyoid muscles. And uh, this, 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 you see, this is the hyoid bone. And these various muscles are the infrahyoid muscles. So they are present over here. And also this must, uh, triangle contains the various viscera like the thyroid gland and the uh, parathyroid glands. Uh, so you see uh, the infrahyoid muscles are four in number, suprahyoid muscles are also four in number. Uh, that um, the muscles, suprahyoid muscles and infrahyoid muscles collectively, uh, they are known as the muscles in the anterior cervical region that um, I will discuss in my next, next 
topic next lecture with you and uh, till then i say you goodbye and uh, thank you very much stay safe and uh, stay home wish you all the best best of luck